Uh, Integra Gold, the Lamar Gold Project. We'll spend uh, a few slides. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the industry and what we're seeing right now before we get into the project. And we, we have two slides on this. The first is, is the, the, the number of discoveries being made and what this does to the pipeline of projects that should naturally fill um, the industry as we move forward. As everyone knows, mines are depleted. They're not like a normal business where as we mine out, we deplete the resources. So we, we always have to be replenishing and replacing those. So what's happened in the last few years is the number of discoveries uh, significantly declining, but at the same time, uh, the number of expiration dollars being spent. So not only discoveries are harder to, uh, are harder to find, the, the low hanging fruit is gone, uh, we're also spending less money. And what that's done is it's caused a real decline, both in reserves right across the industry and the production profile of the majors, um, or a, a, essentially the production profile of the entire sector. So going forward, um, what you would like to see is, is projects being brought up through the discovery, and, and there's different companies from grassroots to, to advanced exploration to development. They should be uh, filling the gaps in that pipeline. But when you have a four or five year downturn like we've just gone through in the sector, there's no money being put into expiration. So expiration is the first to be cut, then it's the permitting. Um, when there's no money, you don't have a choice. And we think Integra is in a, in a very enviable position now because we've been very active through the downturn. Um, and the, the value proposition for Integra is very simple. Um, economic and near term. And near term is, a, is near term, we consider near, near term can be in production in less than two years. And that, that's a term that gets abused in our industry. There's a lot of mines that could be in production in two years, but five years ago they could have been in production two, in two years. Um, we're, we're a mine that will be in production in two years. Uh, our project, and I'll go through some of the highlights of it now, um, is, is one of the very few that, that used that downturn uh, to make a few moves. We acquired a mill out of bankruptcy for pennies in the dollars. Uh, we got all our permitting put in place. We continued at the same time a very active exploration program. Uh, and it's put us in a position now where we're on the brink of uh, going to development and, and through that into production. But also we still have one of the most active exploration, um, uh, one of the most active exploration uh, programs in the entire industry. So it is, as, as John mentioned earlier, a, a very attractive hybrid model. <clears throat> so we are just over 2 million ounces. Uh, I joined the company in uh, mid-2012. Our resource was about 250,000 ounces. Uh, I can't take credit for that. We've got an incredible exploration team uh, in Valdor. But we built the, our, our team has really been built around our success. Um, a big part about our project is our access to infrastructure. We are two kilometers from the city of Valdor. The city of Valdor, for those of you who don't know, it's a mining community of 35,000 people. Uh, it's built around two mines, the Sigma Lamac mines, which are two of Canada's largest gold mines. In 2014, we acquired those two, old, those, those two mines out of bankruptcy, and they're not in operation, but they came with a fully permitted mill. Our discovery, the Triangle Deposit, is two and a half kilometers away in virgin ground. So we're able to use a mill that's already built um, uh, to process our material from Triangle. When we bought that mill in 2014, uh, as I mentioned, we got it for pennies in the dollar. It was a $7 million acquisition. Um, it, that mill itself is valued at $100 million, and it came with a 2.4 million ounce historic resource that we haven't even looked at yet. So there's a lot of value within that. It also came with the Sigma Lamac mines. Uh, the Lamac mine has that Lamac deep target, and hopefully we have a chance to get uh, to, get to that today. <clears throat> Permitted mill, two months after we closed that uh, uh, acquisition, the government allowed us uh, or gave us our environmental permits. And what they allowed us to do was take the permits from the mill property, which is right next door to our triangle property, uh, and amend them to include everything. So it's a two year permitting process that took us 60 days. So all the environmental permits we need for our, uh, for our project are now in place. Um, capital efficiency, because we have that mill already built and because we're a high grade project that comes to surface that's sitting right next to a community where we have full access to um, service providers, uh, miners, geologists, um, we're actually less than $100 million Canadian to build the project. And that's off a study we did in 2015 off a much smaller resource. The updated study is only about three or four work weeks away, but there's nothing within that study, even though the resource has grown substantially, there's no, there's no um, real impacts. Um, <clears throat> when we look at the capital that's going to take to build this project, we're still giving guidance that it should be less than $100 million Canadian. And to have a less than $100 million Canadian project that can get you over 100,000 ounces a year, um, as far as we know, we're the only one in the entire industry. To have that sitting next to a, a community with permits in place, um, you're, kind of, you're kind of moving from something that's very rare almost into unicorn territory because it, they, they just don't exist. <clears throat> High grade, very important. Uh, nine grams per ton is the average grade of our deposit. Uh, what that means, uh, <clears throat> what that means, uh, it's very low cost 
uh, to mine it. Our, the last study we did, our all-in sustaining costs were $730 Canadian. Today that equates to sub $600 all-in. Usually you see those low all-in sustaining costs associated with a very large capex and it's the, <clears throat> we can, uh, we can get you uh, all in sustaining costs of less than $500 an ounce <clears throat> for $800 million. Uh, that's not Integra. We have it all. We have the low capex and we have the low all in sustaining costs as well. And again, near term production. <clears throat> now something that makes us different, this is a two year chart, but we can go back to 2012, a three or four or even a five year chart. Um, value creation. Everyone's got a different definition for value creation. We took our resource from 250,000 ounces to two, two and a half million ounces. Uh, that should be creating value, but what is the value of an ounce? Integra's market cap is about $350 million, so if we take out the $50 million in cash that we have, uh, and maybe $50 million for the mill, we're valued at about $100 to $125 an ounce. Those, those ounce cost us about $10 to $15 an ounce to discover, and that's the discovery cost over the last uh, five years for our project. So we're able to bring market value of $100 plus an ounce for less than $20 uh, discovery cost. <clears throat> We're a company that takes that very seriously. When we look at the last five years, uh, our team has grown uh, in Valdor from five people to just over 70 now. Our head office has gone from seven people to nine people. Um, when we started in 2012, we were a $12 million company. We're now a $350 million company. That's great, but we've obviously, we've issued shares as we've gone and we've raised a lot of money. We've raised $140 million in that time and we're very proud to say that every financing and every warrant we've ever issued is at a lower price than where we are today. In 2012, when gold was at $1,700, Integra was at 20 cents. Today, Integra is at 73 cents and gold is $500 lower. So that, that is true value creation. <clears throat> Looking forward, uh, we can't just say we have a good project and you should invest in that. It's really the catalyst that are going to drive things forward. So in, no in November of 2016, we came up with a resource estimate and we saw a substantial increase in the resources uh, at the Triangle Deposit. That was based on 25,000 meters of new drilling. We've actually drilled 105,000 meters since that resource, or, or not since that resource estimate, but we've done 105,000 meters of drilling that has not yet been incorporated into that resource estimate. So over the next few months, you're gonna see a lot of cal catalysts, and some of those catalysts we've been working on for a long time. So as I mentioned, in the next three or four weeks, you should see an updated PEA. Uh, the last time we did a PEA, the Triangle Deposit recovered 250,000 ounces. The resource at Triangle today is 1.3 million ounces. So we're talking about a, a very large difference in, in the scale of our project. On the back of that, an updated resource estimate, and that's when you'll see the incorporation of that 100,000 meters uh, of new drilling at Triangle. Um, we'll do a bulk sample in Q3. Uh, not only are we drilling, we have six drill rigs turning today. 2015 and 2016, we're the most active single asset exploration company in North America. <clears throat> uh, we have six drill rigs turning today, five of which on the Triangle deposit. Uh, we're also going underground. So we've permitted and we've built a lot of the infrastructure and our decline or our tunnel towards our Triangle deposit is about 550 meters in. So every day we get a bit closer into opening up the deposit. It's an expiration decline, but we'll use that for production. Uh, it's five by five and a half meters. You can fit some pretty big trucks through that. Uh, and on the back of that, you'll always see drill results from, from uh, Integra. Uh, our last press release was a week ago. Our next one will probably be in the next week or two, just because we drill so much. <clears throat> uh, this, is, this is our deposit, or sorry, this is at surface at Triangle. I believe this photo is about 18 months ago. Um, just flicking through, you can see some of the work that we've done. Uh, and this is the decline. So we've built everything in place, and you're only two kilometers from the city of Eldor. Um, we've been able to build an incredible team because you have Iniku Eagle, Gold Corp, I Am Gold, a lot of these big companies with their northern operations. Um, their, their geologists, their technicians, their engineers, their miners can work for Integra and then go home for dinner. It's not a fly in, fly out camp. So our team, if we look at just our exploration team, our uh, VP exploration, our project manager, and our senior geo, we're all in charge of the LNR uh, geology at the LNR project, one after the other, and they all left to join Integra. We sort of hit that critical mass where we're able to attract big company people now. <clears throat> uh, Lamac Deep, I've got 30 seconds to touch on Lamac Deep. Um, if, we talk, if we have six drill rigs turning today and we have about 15,000 meters in assays pending, five of those are from Triangle. Uh, Triangle is the, is the backbone of Integra. But we pride ourselves in, in continuing to look down the road and, and um, keep that pipeline of, uh, of news uh, full. <clears throat> so Lamac Deep, what Lamac Deep is, it's a very exciting target. We spent the last few years talking about it, but just in September of this year, we've been able to drill it. 
what you're looking at here is a cross-section of two mines, the Sigma and Lamac mines. They were always owned, they, they were operated for 50 and 60 years by Tech and Placer Dome, two companies that never liked each other, never shared information. So even though they were only 500 meters away, um, there was never really any drilling done in between. Tech, the, um, the Lamac mine on the right, uh, produced four and a half million ounces, but only went down to 1,000 meters. Well, right next door, Sigma produced four and a half million ounces, but down to 2,000 meters. There's always been this concept that there's a, there's a depth, there's an extension to the Lamac mine. It shut down in 85. Uh, Placer Dome would acquire it. A little bit of drilling was done into that, that depth extension. Um, but then throughout the 90s with a, a depressed gold price and then a junior's attempt to put an open pit, that actually that company would go bankrupt, which would lead to, lead to eventually it, it working its way into Integra. For the first time uh, in about 15 years, we're going back and we're drilling that Lamac deep target. We can't go underground because all these workings are flooded, but what we're looking at is the extension of the Lamac mine. If you have four and a half million ounces in the upper zone and four and a half million ounces right next door, what happens when those two mines come together? Because you, as you can see on the Sigma mine, there's these big sweeping structures and we project them to intersect the Lamac mine at about 1,400 to 1,600 meters. It's deep, but we're also in a district where agnico has got a mine that's going over 3,000 meters deep. To have an exploration target like this, to have a budget to go after it, and we're spending about $2.5 million on it, uh, with a permitted mill sitting on top, um, it's not an exploration opportunity you, you come across very often. So we, we drilled a 2,000 meter deep pilot hole, and we're doing a series of wedges, and those are little, it's called the, the mother hole, and then the child holes that come off it. So every 50 meters, we'll put about a 300 meter wedge off into that target. So no results have come out on that yet. For us, it changes our entire company. The triangle results we've had are phenomenal, but what we're doing is just really proving up triangle, and it's gonna be probably that 100 to 120,000 ounce per year range. We have a large mill that can handle additional capacity. If this Lamac deep target hits, it'll be expensive to go after because we'll likely have to put in a new shaft, but those two mines produce 250,000 ounces collectively. That's something that can transform our entire company. So if we talk about near-term results, we have our PA, our resource estimate. We also have Lamac deep results, which kind of every, every Friday when we get our assays, that's the first thing we look to see if there's any, uh, any drill results from Lamac deep. <clears throat> Um, just under 500 million shares outstanding. Um, as I mentioned, we started that process at 20 cents. We're sitting in the mid 70s now. Um, we do have a lot of liquidity, and what that's led to is a lot of institutional investors. Uh, I won't go through the list now, but you will see um, some of the biggest gold funds in the world um, have taken positions in Integra because they believe what we're doing. We have 43 million in cash, $5 million in marketable securities, um, and uh, $5 million in tax rebates we expect to get this year as well. <clears throat> 14 analysts cover Integra. Um, average target price is about $1.10. So uh, we have a booth straight out the back door if anyone would like to talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen.